हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन फ्रेंड्स इन आर प्रीवियस वीडियोस वी डिस्कस्ड कॉलोनियलिज्म वी डिस्कस्ड एक्सप्रेशनिज्म एंड डिफरेंट अदर मूवमेंट्स व्हिच वी फाइंड ड्यूरिंग द ट्वेंटी एथ सेंचुरी इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर फ्रेंड्स वी वांट टू डिस्कस पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म एज अ लिटररी मूवमेंट और एज अ थ्योरी in english literature in this video lecture we will discuss what is post modernism we will also discuss salient features of post modernism and then we will also have a look at some of the important post modernist writers of english literature but before we before we move ahead i request my dear viewers to please subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon so that whenever i upload a new video you might get the notifications so friends now let's begin we know that you know post modernism is a very tricky topic it is as tricky as modernism in one of my previous videos i have discussed what modernism is and we have discussed the important elements of modernism in english literature friends post modernism is a movement it is a theory you know which is found in almost all branches of knowledge you will come across this term post modernism when you are studying sociology philosophy history science economics and what not in almost all fields you know this movement has been discussed by the scholars in the same manner we are the students of art and literature in the field of art and literature also we have this movement called post modernism during the second half of the 20th century some critics or some scholars believe that post modernism is a continuation of modernism we know that modernism in english literature is found in the first half of the 20th century so some scholars some critics believe that post modernism of the second half of the 20th century is actually a continuation of the modernism of the first half of the 20th century but some other scholars some other critics they believe that post modernism is actually against the norms and tendencies of modernism and that is the reason why you know one of the important critics Tony Cleave has rightly said that post modernism is a theory of rejecting theories right so according to Tony Cleave post modernism rejects all previous uh, theories which were propounded in the movement of modernism okay friends before we start the discussion of the important features of post modernism first of all let me make it clear that sometimes we write post modernism like p o s t hyphen m o d e r n i s m so post and modernism we put one hyphen and sometimes without hyphen we write this term but there is a difference between these two terms right when we use the hyphen after the word post right then it generally specifies the historical timeline okay so remember when somebody writes post modernism with a hyphen in between you know he or she is suggesting the time period of this movement but when we write the term post modernism without a hyphen we are suggesting a theory an ideology or a movement okay so this is a little difference that we must know 
before we move ahead now let's see what is the time period okay in which you find this movement this theory in english literature the term postmodernism was actually first used by arnold toynbee an important writer of english literature and an important historian okay he has used this term postmodernism for the first time in the year 1939 some other critics believe that toynbee used this term for the first time in 1947 so that is a debatable issue we don't want to enter into that debate okay but postmodernism as a period okay as a movement actually uh, we can say begins after 1960 onwards right as we know that the movement of modernism is found between the two world wars right world war the first that is from 1914 onwards and world war the second 1945 so the movement of modernism is found between these two world wars and the movement of postmodernism is found after 1960s right so uh, please remember this period from 1960s onwards till today's times we can say that this period is the period of postmodernism right the problems of the contemporary social world in today's times the rapid change that we are we are uh, uh, experiencing in our life and the new forms of media and culture all are the reference points for the postmodern critique and analysis now let's begin to understand what this postmodernism is right as i told you it is a new literary theory or movement which discusses the features of the present day art and literature okay so in today's times whatever features or elements that you see in in the present art and literature is termed as post modernism art and literature okay both modernism and post modernism they generally discuss the this destruction okay or the frustration or the loss of faith of modern man okay but there is a difference right the modern literature presents the modern life as fragmented alienated and distorted with a with an element of grief and agony if you find uh, the literature of the first half of the 20th century T. S. Eliot, Ezra Pound, and all such writers and poets. You know, you will find the theme of alienation, the theme of desert, uh, of uh, frustration, right? Uh, which we find in modern man's life, right? For an example, if you read the Wasteland, uh, a very popular poem written by T. S. Eliot, you find this theme of alienation. You find this theme of frustration but there is an agony in the modern literature in modernism you find an attempt by the writers to find out the solutions to these problems right but on the other hand in if you read the post modern literature after 1960s right there is no attempt to find out the solution to this problem in today's times you know when you read current literature you find the same themes of frustration alienation and all okay but here there is no attempt to find out the solutions to this problem solution to the frustration of modern man so this is the slight difference between the literature of modernism and literature of post modernism right uh, in both post modernism and modernism you know you find the loss of faith okay and loss of faith from what loss of faith from five things number one man has lost his faith in god how friends remember charles darwin an important scientist 
he propounded a very revolutionary theory scientific theory of evolution when he published his book entitled as the origin of species in 1959 it was a revolutionary work why because in this work for the first time you know charles darwin proved that man is not made by god man is actually the result of the slow and steady evolution evolution process from amoeba to monkey and then man so as a result what happened you know the modern man of 20th century lost faith from god for the first time in the beginning of the 20th century number 2 man also lost faith from the king or the kingship right karl marx if you remember in my previous videos in one of my previous videos i discussed marxism and at that time we discussed that karl marx he propounded his theory in the mid 19th century which rejected the kingship which rejected feudalism like he advocated for the economic and social equality of the modern man he believed that the whole society is divided between two classes the upper class and the lower class the rich and the poor the industrialist and the workers right and he advocated that there must be a balance between these two so the idea of the whole kingdom the idea of the kingship has been lost as this has been disappeared in the 20th century moreover if you examine the life of the 20th century modern man you find the loss of faith in individual himself or herself right how did it happen this happened when sigmund freud an important psychologist he published his book entitled as the interpretation of dreams in 1899 so in the beginning of the 20th century you know for the first time we understood that human mind is just like an iceberg iceberg is what only 10% is visible 90% is within the water so human mind is just like that so human personality is not what you exactly see from outside okay lot of reality is lying within the mind of the modern man so for the first time you know our our whole concept or ideology of reality is changed right uh, before 20th century people believed reality as what we see but now after sigmund freud's theory of dreams interpretation of dreams published in 1899 for the first time you know we started believing that reality is not what we see reality is always something different okay why because a human mind is very complex so man lost faith from the external personality individuality that we understood so far okay moreover man also lost faith from democracy right we know that you know in the first half of the 20th century we come across two great world wars right and these two wars they brought terrific results much bloodshed killing massacres destruction all around the world and as a result you know man lost faith from the present day democracy the whole concept of democracy was shattered by these two world wars so man lost faith from democracy also and the fifth and the last uh, loss of faith is the loss of faith in science we know that we are living in the world of science and technology but the destructive powers of science has done much harm to the modern world right during the two world wars atomic powers and nuclear powers were used by some of the countries 
and as a result you know men started believing that science is actually not beneficial to modern man science might be harmful to us so all in all you know when you read modern literature or post modern literature you find these are the general themes you know of loss of faith from everything loss of faith from god from science from democracy from kingship and from everything right so destruction alienation frustration of human mind and meaninglessness of life these are some of the major elements of post modern and modern literature okay now let's start the discussion of the important features of post modern literature what kind of literature do we find in the present day times right number 1 here in post modern literature we have multiple meanings or we have no meanings lack of meanings means no meanings either the text gives us so many different meanings or sometimes the text comes out as meaningless modern human mind interprets life individually right i interpret a work of art in in my own words in my as per my own understanding and you interpret and analyze the same work of art in your own with your own understanding and that's the reason why you know uh, there are multiple meanings which come out from the single text at the same time there are some other texts which actually do not have meanings at all if you read waiting for god or or if you read the birthday party written by harold pinter these are the examples of modern you know uh, the waiting waiting for goro is the post modern literature and the birthday party is the modern literature these are the examples of the works of art in modern and post modern literature where you do not get any meaning out of the text so meaninglessness number 1 number 2 is plastic okay plastic in modern post modern literature you know sometimes some portions are taken from different other texts right the author the writer copies and pastes these portions from other writers from other texts okay so modern literature or modern post modern work of art is a kind of a hodgepodge is a kind of a mixture of the traditional and modern works right so copying and pasting has been a tradition in the post modern time so in post modern literature you find this element another important element of post modern literature is minimalism minimalism means uh, uh, focusing on something which is very common okay krishna swami an important writer a thinker has rightly said that in post modern post modern literature there are no epic noble heroes here in today's times the authors do not write the great stories of the great epic heroes right no grand narratives no great stories which elevate our thoughts instead what do we find in post modern literature here there are more self help books on how to win and how to empower oneself on the bookshelves in our railway stations friends you must have observed when you are traveling at the railway station or at the bus stops you know uh, there are some book stalls where you will not find uh, the literature uh, delineating or expressing the stories of great heroes you will find the books of how to win uh, friends and influence people how to be rich how to overcome your problems so these are how to kind of books are most popular uh, in modern times right here the focus is not on the high elevated stories and great characters like great warriors or kings right here we find the stories and characters from very common life right the beggars are the characters 
workers are the characters unemployed youth of modern times these are the characters and their struggle or their conflict is mostly presented in the modern times in post modern times right uh, how a man starts uh, puts up a fight against the globalized and industrial and scientific world in post modern times that has been presented mostly in post modern literature another important feature of post modern literature is use of magic realism in one of my previous videos when we were discussing realism we discussed different types of realism there also we discussed what this magic realism is in post modern times in today's times you know the tags or the works of art are actually the mixture of reality and unreality we find the mixture of realism and imagination or fantasy right most of the times in today's times when we read literature you come across some unrealistic or unbelievable scenes and characters which are presented a nice example uh, which we everybody of us know is harry potter right harry potter is what it is an example of magic realism in today's times you will come across some novels where the characters are having some superhuman powers right you read salman rushdie's uh, midnight children or you read uh, uh, gabriel garcia's 100 years of solitude these are the examples where you find this element of magic realism right another important feature of post modern literature friends is intertextuality now what is this intertextuality the name itself tells us what intertextuality means right in post modern literature you know we do not find the element of originality today's literature is not pure and is not original we come across many references and allusions from other texts right as i told you pastiche uh, they copy and paste from other works of art so as a result you know uh, in today's texts it is not a pure original text it is actually a mixture of so many texts so it is known as intertextual the authors present the references from different texts in post modern times another important feature is temporal distortion it is about time right here non linear time is presented by the authors in post modern times the story in today's times moves from present to past and from past to present again and from present to future again and this is how you know oh, one minute okay so uh okay present to past and then to present and then to future so there are so many so many shifts of time and flashbacks in uh, post modern literature and the last important feature of post modernism is metafiction metafiction means fiction within the fiction or you can say the story within the story in today's times you know we find that the story is actually about how to tell the story right here the characters they talk about the development of plot and story within the story or uh, let me give an example you must have studied geoffrey chaucer's the canterbury tales what is it geoffrey chaucer is telling us the stories of the characters and these characters are also telling the stories to other characters in the story so it is a story within the story in the same manner you know if you read tim o brains a uh, short story cycle the things they carried or if you read italo calvino's uh, novel which was published in 1979 the title of this novel is if on a winter's night these are examples where you know a reader attends to read a novel 
right the characters are the readers and they are reading another novel within the novel so that is why it is known as metafiction right so friends these are some important features where you find the theme of destruction alienation in modern times right but there is no attempt to find out the solution to this problem pastic uh, is an important element where you find the mixture of so many different tags intertextuality metafiction these are some of the important features at the end let's let's conclude let's summarize this discussion by using the uh, lines given by Michael Sajuko he said that post modernism was a reaction against modernism right post modernism is a reaction against modernism where where modernism was about objectivity objectivity right and post modernism is about subjectivity so post modern literature it it is personal and modern literature is objective impersonal where modernism sought a singular truth and post modernism sought the multiplicity of truth so there are single meanings in modernism modern literature but in post modernism there are multiple meanings and multiple truths so at the end let's say that post modernism was a movement which began after 1960s right and it rejected the norms the attitudes of the previous time period which we know as modernism right frustration alienation destruction all these are some of the important themes of post modern literature but here in today's times the writers they do not try to find out the solutions to these problems right mixing of different tags mixing of reality and unreality magic realism copying and paste pasting from different other authors right and uh, mixing of reality focus on life of the conflict of common characters right here we do not have great warriors or great heroes common man's life all these are some of the major elements of post modernist literature so friends i hope the idea is now clear to you if you really really like this video please share the video among your friends and classmates thank you thank you very much